Hello, so they had the lobby set up and then the admin needed a break further and now we're waiting for the players. Yeah, sorry about that guys. We were expecting you back a little bit quicker than that, but uh... Oh well, Frozen Temple. Gonna be the first map, so we know that much at least. Yep. I am going to dig into... I bought this like two weeks ago. I hope it's still okay. Whatever it is, Whoa! it sounds crinkly and yummy. Well, I mean, it's a drink. Oh. It, I was just opening up a straw. <laughs> it's like Korean drink. I got it like a green tea last time and it came with an amazing straw, which it does again. It like, it like gets longer. And then also there's the, the thing that's like crinkly, you know, that you can, whatever this is. It's great. I love it. It's great. Anyways. And then you, know what? you just poke a hole. Nailed it. You know, you know what I got a hankering to watch right now for reasons unknown to me? Me drink coffee, cafe latte? No. Oh, okay. I was going to say Jumanji. Mm. Jumanji's a good movie. Well, it's an okay movie. I think it's a nostalgic movie. There you go. It, it quickly devolved from... Well, you know, it got better reviews than Hook. And everyone loves Hook. He's an okay player. Hook? Yeah, he's saying, saying, his... yeah, saying his name very wrong to get to Hook. <laughs> or maybe you've just got an accent, man. Canadian accent? Ba bagel. No, I guess that'd be more like like Irish or something. I uh, I don't know. It's it's me boy, Hook. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just sounds like you're a fan of Captain Hook. Um... All right, new best of three in the bottom right as the blue Protoss. He's harsome. And his opponent spawning the top side. He's just gone through the most like rigorous week of qualifiers in his life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the red Terran, you thermal. Blue Thermy. His clan deck I find kind of funny. Hmm? All the speculation about a new team and uh, I don't know if you know what FaZe Clan is. It's kind oh, of yeah. a big deal, but it's just obviously uh, don't think that's real. Don't think that's too legit, especially with the XX in front of it. It's, uh, you know, just, um, yeah, I don't know. I do hope Euthermal joins a really cool team. Yeah, actually, so interesting for me was I thought Euthermal already had a team pre-planned and ready to go when he announced that he was going to leave uh, right? ET Gaming. Yeah. I know for a fact he's in talks with other teams, but as far as I'm aware, there's nothing committed just yet. And the only reason I know this is because he wanted to play for our tournament, but he basically said, like, I don't know if there'll be sponsor conflicts or not. Like, <laughs> I have I have no idea what team I'm joining still. Yeah. Base traits, and it's only allowed for subs to watch the VODs, because you add a score command. Um... I don't no. think that's really necessary. <laughs> like, not to be super rude, but you could probably just ask the chat or go to the Team Liquid thread. I don't know. I I've been in that situation before on, like, mobile, I guess, where I didn't know the score of the last series, but I don't, I don't really know if it's necessary. So the issue I have with that, at least for when I'm broadcasting, I don't know about you because you've been covering my ass for the last three weeks, is that I will regularly forget to update the score, which in turn ends up making it oh, worse yeah. than having no score. Yeah, I remember that. That's also another reason. I don't, just ask the just ask the people around. Like the mods are here, they're gonna they're gonna answer maybe. Anyway, um, no, I didn't just discover bendy straws. Bendy straws are awesome. I discover Korean ingenuity, all right, which is a straw that is short that unfolds itself and like it gets a lot longer, and it also has a <laughs> bendy straw addition. Okay. <laughs> Just something. Guys, I know what bendy straws are, but let me describe this crazy new thing and then you proceed to describe like a bendy straw. <laughs> like... No, because I it, the main thing is not the bendy straw, it's that it uh, extends from itself, right? Like you can, it's um, it's like a, not a cane. So I mean, right now you're describing blue to a colorblind person. I got no idea. <laughs> I can't even visualize Just a Just imagine straw a right small now. straw that gets longer when you pull on it. <laughs> Instead oh, of being... Tough. Instead of a small straw that like you're like barely sipping out of, all right? Because Americans. Right. Suck. I, 
I do want to keep talking about the straw, but we actually have something really cool happening here, <laughs> and we have Magfield Accelerator being researched by Euthermal. Now, this is important for a multitude of reasons, but the number one being his recent games versus Drogo here on this stream, not just like three days ago, where he went not one, not two, but like five factories worth of Cyclone production, all with Magfield Accelerator, all trading up and beating Drogo to a pulp. To pull this out versus Harsom initially doesn't mean we're going to go that deep with it. But it leads to the potential to, and I'm very excited to see if he goes that way. He might, uh, just because, you know, he has. <laughs> I can see him certainly doing it again. But Frozen Temple is a fairly popular map for just the Cyclone opener, not mech committal. Uh, so you get maybe three Cyclones max, and then you go back in a biome. Uh, we'll see, though, as soon as he adds on a second production facility, whether it's a barracks or a factory. He's going to engineer me now, but that should be just for the stag defense. This hurts. He finds the pylon, and this might just make you thermal continue investing the cyclones, and maybe he originally didn't want to. As I said, three is kind of like usually the cap. Ooh, what a mistake, though, not having a wall off, and Harzen takes advantage of it. Oh, the Oracle, the first one goes down pretty quickly. The problem was splitting his fire and attention between the Adepts and the Oracle, not knowing which one to go over next. So you Thermal actually ends up taking care of this, but perhaps could have been done a little bit more smoothly. Either way, nice job on the defense. Now, the priority, I guess, is kind of scary, right? Like, on one hand, if you ignore that Oracle, it can melt a Cyclone and it can kill everything else you have. Uh, this one gets a nice lock on, actually, so deals with that Oracle. But the adapts are the question mark there, right? Like, if you focus fire them, they die faster, and then everything else lives, so maybe clean up better. Uh, I like you, Thermos Defense. And we do have more factories coming down. Looks like we might just be going deeper into Cyclones. Cool. Well, I would put you, Thermos Defense, as pretty damn good, and Harsom's attack is not so good. So right now, Harsom's in a bit of a pickle. If it wasn't for the high ground advantage here, the high ground vision... Uh, he actually would be a under a lot of pressure. The sentry only just came in, the pylon only just formed, and Euthermal might have had a push with so many marines and two cyclones. He's gonna go around the other way now, realizing that's, you know, inevitable part, part of Frozen Temple is having that that con game on top of the ramp. But maybe not here if you're fast enough, or maybe not here if you just bring on the rocks. Yeah, no high ground here. I don't know if the timing works out quite as well, though. Harsum's got his third up. He's almost saturated on it. He's gonna have a bigger army than, you know, a minute ago. I don't think Euthermal's tiny marine army, unupgraded with a single cyclone, is going to kill Harsum. Hey, you're from Virginia, right? Yeah. Okay. So, if you were in the desert wandering uh -huh. and you're crazy dehydrated. Uh huh. Would you be a desperate, thirsty Virginian? Uh, Virginian? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I guess it really depends on where you, or what you identify yourself as. Am I a Virginian, or am I a transplanted Marylander? <laughs> okay, fair point. Uh, lots of cyclones coming to the south. I actually paired up with some widow mines. Look, I don't right. mind this actually. Virginia is for lovers. No one in Virginia is a Virginian. <laughs> well, when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I like the widow mines as well. So the one scary thing for you thermal, which by the way isn't going to be that scary given like two minutes. It's going to be a blink forward on top of his cyclones. Uh, that's going to stop them from microing. That's going to actually kill them very quickly so they don't have a lot of health. The Wood of Mine is going to stop that, similar to how they protect Liberators, you know? But I really like that Harsum apparently is... I I'm guessing has played against this. He's dealing with it pretty well. Yeah. Lucid yeah. Phoenix and then taking care of the other Wood of Mine was really, really nice. Well, and Blink Stalkers can be the answer. It just was when we saw Drogo go forward, he was losing so many of them. Right, so that, that's what exactly what I was going to get into next. One of the big things about this is Euthermal's not getting trades like he was versus uh, Drogo the other day. And for those who don't know, you do straight up trade better with the Cyclone. He was getting really aggressive with scans and he was dealing a lot of damage. This time around, it's been kind of, we'll see, light pressure at best. As we saw there, though, like if he can get a lock on or two, he's going to get better attacks every single time. But what I like out of Harsum isn't his blink micro and it isn't, you know, dodging the Widow Mines. 
is that he is defending on both sides. Like, there's stalkers up in the north. He's ready to fight down here in the south. He continues to expand. And even though Euthermo can knock down a Nexus in, like, four seconds flat if he has all the Cyclones to lock onto it, there's no opportunity to do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Scans to try and see what exactly Harsim's following up with. Like, it could be a mass bling stalker gateway immortal army. Or, you know, he could be going something sneakier, like... I mean, I was thinking Fleet Beacon. Oh, that's pretty to throw down. But, I, I mean, I guess that's all, like, Storm could be a problem. Oh, what am I almost a problem? But it is going I'm to be a transfer in a Tempest. We, we had this last time, and I really want to just compliment it here. Like, the pre-scan is really important to make sure you don't lose the lock-on. But uh, Harsim getting right into the face of these Cyclones, and unfortunately, while still bleeding some out, not taking a bad fight whatsoever. Your Thermal is getting caught on two different sides. He's kind of getting sandwiched in here, and the Cyclone's greatest asset is the fact that he can run away, but he's not able to run away if he's constantly running into Harsim every which way. Yeah. It's, uh... It still trades... Okay, though. Like, they're both on four bases. They both have an even army supply, believe it or not. Some of that's in Wood of Mines, of course, which might not get shots off, but... Uh, as Harsim is not quite on top of the production yet, things aren't desperate yet either for Euthermal. His fourth base is turning to a planetary, and his army is going to continue to grow. Harsim, he trades, but he has a bank. So he could go into, again, those star that Stargate that we saw. Uh, Cyclone's running into stalkers, though. They really want to get the Widow Mines. Do they ever get Drilling Claws? No, that would help so much, I think. Because they can run kind of on top of the stalkers and do that. Oh, well. I like this whole Drilling Claws. I always think it's Tumbling Claws. It's like... <laughs> Silly non-difference between the types, but uh, I was actually every time we play two v two, we goof around, right? We usually have silly strategies. We just kind of mess about. I love doing mass widow mines because when you do have protoss, like if you do get those drilling claws, and you have like a hundred widow mines, you're gonna have a good time. But oh, Harsim oh. didn't know the widow mines are there. Still, don't know if that's gonna be good enough to stop the attack. The observer does clean up the rest of the widow mines. Unless he can pick up that observer, Harsim's gonna consistently be able to just blink away and then focus them down. Yeah. Harsim's doing a fantastic job dealing with Mass Cyclone. Um, and he's, it looks like he's gonna win. He kills the third base. I mean, the part of this too is like, even though this is being handled way better than we saw last time with, say, Drogo, it's still not exactly perfect, but it is winning him the game. The shift is finally in his favor. Yeah, killing that third base was a pretty big deal. And maybe, maybe Euthermal could have saved that. Uh, Mass is repair before losing all of them. I don't know, but that certainly hurt him. He needs the gas. Especially. No wood mines up here quite yet. These aren't off of their cooldown, and there's not enough cyclones. And then being on top of production means that's going to be game over. The cyclones can't uh, micro at all now. Yeah. I mean, we finally got up to that 5k. There's so many factories down too. But GG gets called, and Harston will take the first game in this best of three. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to address it in game, but I just want to address this because this is a fair point that I'm sure everybody thinks about at some point, right? So this is not something i want to scold you for but i just want to point out why i don't agree with uh this guy says it's my opinion that time real would show more cleavage we get more viewers right oh. we sarcastically have talked about that like as a joke but the thing is those are not the type of viewers we really want like let's say zombie grab wore like a push-up bra and a crazy low cut top and we got like a thousand extra viewers for it those are not the viewers we want guys <laughs> i'm sorry um i mean besides like ethics i suppose or morals or whatever literally they're going to be viewers that have ad block on that spam chat with really stupid shit that probably will never donate and never sub i mean that's what uh, i'm guessing at least some of them might be desperate. <laughs> that part's questionable but some of them might be quote unquote desperate but um also i wouldn't so yeah i mean ignore the fact that it's her choice as well let's <laughs> not forget about that i just i just don't think base rate tv wants those types of viewers i've actually had a lot of discussions with some people who are quite jealous of our chat like i actually like shout out to our mod shout out to our, our subscribers to everyone who participates in chat i've re i've received fairly high praise from other big streamers about our chat and they're like how do you get your chat so not ridiculous do you just use a ton of view bots i'm like no dude <laughs> we've just systematically weeded out idiots yeah. over years like over three years, there's been a lot of people already banned, so... Actually, there's not. That's a uh, falsity. We have less than 100 people banned on the channel. It's more that I think people have just kind of learned that that's not... The attitude, like, we, we don't... No, no way that's possible. I could paste your ban list. It is seriously like not even 60. Are you sure that's not the new ban list? Because they've no, gone no, through so, so I'm many. I'm not going off... I'm not going off of Google Doc. Like, you can see under your channel settings, like, who's banned on the channel. 
And if we don't count every single fat Rifkin, Rifkin double chin as like a separate account, because it is just one dude, we have less than 100 people banned. I find that very hard to believe. Like, I, I'm not saying that I don't believe that you looked at the numbers and that the numbers are there. <laughs> but just Look that like- Look at right now! Like, I, I believe that it says that is my point, but what I don't believe is that it's actually accurate. Like, oh, I would so have said- You're saying like, like it doesn't count numbers from like a year ago type thing. Something like that, right? Because Maybe. like, over three Maybe. years, I feel uh, like even I have banned 100 people. And not just like the the spam people, and not because I'm I'm trigger happy with bands, but like three years. Sounds no like someone's trigger happy with bands. No, I actually want to see what the mods want to say about that. Like maybe they're on banning people left and right, and they're giving people second chances. But there's been so many discussions in mod chat about banning. There's like at least I would say f three well, average so casts. This is, this is where I bring it back because actually this is stuff people don't know, right? Like our mods do discuss bans. We don't just like ban people on site. Usually it's a timeout. And usually, like more often than not, like uh, Bobble's got this great mentality. I don't agree with it because I'm the first person to be like, no, fuck you, get out of here. But it's like he doesn't like banning people because the idea is that if you ban them, then they have, never have a chance to change. Whereas a lot of people that they do ban either get unbanned because they've talked it out in PMs or uh, mm -hmm. just been a timeout misunderstood. Again, you might be right, though. I actually don't know if Twitch doesn't update this thing. Like, maybe this doesn't show names from, like, two years ago. Or maybe it only shows a max list of 60, and until I delete one of those 60, it doesn't show me one of the initial 51 type thing. Mm. I have no idea. I, I, that could actually be very different. But base trade, TV chat, best chat says kinky mail, and I'm just going to agree with it. Yeah. Uh, I was going to get something else. Oh, I thought what <laughs> you're... <laughs> <laughs> that took me so <laughs> that took me a while uh... <laughs> okay I didn't see it at first oh, oh it's still up in the chat oh did you just stream can we talk about it I want to talk <laughs> it, it came up in the stream yeah Okay. If you guys are fast with your fingers, uh, then you get to see the joke. If you didn't, too bad. Pay more attention in the future. But okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into game number two in this best of three, spawning in the upper right side of the map. He's currently down a game after a risky strategy. It is the blue Terran Youth Thermal. God damn it. <laughs> in the bottom left. As the Red Protoss, he is harsome. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Bill Cosby. You are currently the best Korean caster. Don't forget that there are also troll and mature nations. So you might really want these kinds of viewers, Kappa. Yeah. Um. Okay, so. God. It's Frost, it's Cross Spawn. It's probably going to be a relatively long game. You thermal can throw out the cyclone build on whatever map i assume but it's a question of harson really dealt with that really nicely so i don't think you're gonna throw it out again but I, I thought you were gonna tackle is that that same guy that said that about the low cut shirts and whatnot also no said positive. that no. no the uh also said that the double standard thing that's what i thought you were gonna bring up not the type of streamer that we we could be, I suppose, and it's the uh, it's kind of along the same lines of having a really good chat because I know that guy wasn't exactly the best chatter and probably should be responding to him, whatever. But like, there's been a lot of cases where someone we know that's been around for a long time where the mods know really well because they're frequent in chat and they usually like 90% okay say something really dumb and stupid and they get timed out and the mods say don't do that again. Like that's what I think Rifkin would be if he was a viewer in Paste TV chat. Wait, what? He was saying it's a double standard that you would say you'd be able to say that I'm a desperate, thirsty Virginian. If he said it, he'd be timed out. But I was describing a scenario where you'd be in the <clears> desert, <throat> and I was actually being completely accurate. In fact, I forgot to add in the part where you'd be a dirty, desperate, thirsty Virginian. Yeah, there you you'd go. Because you'd be covered in sand. See, there you go. So if you're clever, it's fine. If you're the point is, dick, it's not. We've we've known uh, we've known Rifkin for three years, so. It's different than whoever you are, guy that got timed down eventually. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that's going over that because there's really not much else going on quite yet. Uh, I'm guessing it's gonna be a what am I job for you, Thermal and Harsum. Well, Harsum does macro.
Well, uh, hmm? I guess as far as scouting is concerned, you throw most poking around the map still. Hearthstone did, of course, see him quite early. He's actually going to the top left on purpose. Now, you Thermal actually did scout there first, so the funny thing is he won't go up there to find like any accidental proxy type thing, if that was the case. But uh, he will have a little bit of a scuffle here at the Watchtower. Rest in peace, SCV. Uh, oh, okay. Um, well, Harsom got, I guess, the bare minimum of a scout. It is going to be a wood of mine job. Nailed it. Uh, Stargate's opener for Harsom. Euthermal so, is prepping against it, but he should attack before the Oracle comes in. Uh, I'll try to make this the last point we talk about, it too. Uh, so I guess Twitch's ban list actually isn't accurate on the settings dashboard thing, because chat or mod chat thing is 974 rows on the perma ban list. If that's the case, then that's probably like a thousand ish people, whereas this definitely doesn't show even a hundred. Yeah, I was. That's a, there's like no fucking way. <laughs> it's not a stat, luckily, that we've ever had to rely on, so it doesn't. I'm not I feel so like, upset about being wrong about it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it is one of those things where, like, I'm not saying that Twitch all, like, you know, throws out things that aren't tested, but maybe this one isn't entirely accurate. And no one cares, because, like, what what do they care how many people they banned on their. Yeah, it's. it's I'm pretty sure, sure this may actually be one of the few instances this ever gets re realized. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, anyway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have. Uh, okay, anyway. So Adepts get in here. Uh, not enough to do on the, the bunker finish right on time. Unfortunately, the Oracle gets into the net. Oh, there is a wood of mine there. Oh my god. I would not have seen that. But nice, nice eyes. Arson from does. Arson. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Whoa, what the hell? eyes as big as his lips. <laughs> Isn't that like a saying, like eyes bigger than your stomach or whatever? Yeah, but Arson's case is definitely a bigger than his lips. Because <laughs> yeah. he's uh, got really good eyes, is what I'm trying to say here, guys. Other side of the map, though, some damage going down in the main. And, of course, uh, gonna have to pick up and get Uda there. Oh, I guess that was the second meta back up there? Oh, it was, yeah. Mm, yeah, I know, right? Uh, more probes are being targeted down, so up to a total of five. Could try and target down the Phoenix instead to maybe get out of there with the meta back, but was tangling with the Adept, so that Phoenix. Phoenix, please. The Phoenix is supposed to kill the Medivac. Well, oh well. Oh, the one of my shots are gonna help kill the SCVs? <laughs> it's like most of what they killed. You, you suck, Yeah, a little bit awkward. <laughs> that one one of mine was absolutely terrible. The other ones are okay. Uh, 10 workers killed. More are gonna go down. Probably 12? No, everyone, every single one of them died at the same time. They couldn't target fire on the same like an SCV. So actually, the rate of a Medivac healing is kind of interesting to me. I just was watching that with the one adept versus that one marine on the top side of that command center. The adept took the marine down to one health, medvac was healing it, and it was actually one health shy of living by the time the adept was able to shoot again. Mm -hmm. So just like all things to consider, like fractions of a second can make all the difference in this game. Yeah. Okay, uh, Harsim coming in with two oracles. Man, he's really laying on thick with this damage and does not want you thermal to mine from this natural at all. No, he does not. Hey, the revelation comes down, sees that there's widow mines. And that's this is This is going to be too much damage. Uh Harsum has his third nexus down. He's about to say this is this Uh okay. Yes. Uh, unnecessary. You think trying to be too, too fancy. <laughs> this juking of this one marine. Oh, no, it goes go. down, <laughs> son of a gun. I uh, thank you to Eadway, by the way, for the 19 months long awesome resub. Other side of the map, what mines do go down to the main base of Harsim, and it looks like he's not paying attention, so slugging it out gets eight workers. Problem is, nice. back at home, he's still, like, while there's a bunker down, there's really not enough units to fight, and the bunker's not in range of anything to keep the Marines protected and safe. Yeah, um, the Adepts could definitely try and target fire the Marines down and then come back, you know, again later with more Adepts, right? But they're also just trying to get SCVs. Uh, another, oh, that's nothing. There's nothing in that. Oh, he's almost got a second shot. This one is gonna get one probe, one more. That's it, though. And I think the damage is still... Uh, it's still better for Harson. the damage he did to Euthermal. Stim is on the way, though, plus one, and Euthermal did manage to get a third CC. It's just not as on location, and there's not a lot of units to use Stim and Medivax with. How many Medivacs does he end up having? Two, okay. Liberator is gonna get three probes. I mean, he's really, I think, evened up the worker kill counts. In fact, he perfectly evened up the worker kill counts. 70-17. Damn. 
I was actually just gonna mention like this this game here reminds me a lot of what we saw with Sake and and um sort of moments ago in that previous series where it's just like really scrappy back and forth, like both players just slugging it out, like one punching the other's face after the other. But unfortunately for you thermal, Harsum I just feel has overall better responses. I mean, the Phoenix is policing the air, you got enough ground units to fight. Overall, I don't think he's gonna take too much more damage this game. Meanwhile, outside the natural base. Attacks, or it's not attack, that's revelation. Yeah. Uh, still very useful, because the medevacs are going to be Thermal's greatest weapon to bring in this game more back in his favor. This drop to the north actually goes unscouted. It's going to be able to pop off a warp prism, probably get the pylon before it does anything, and... Oh, there goes warp prism. Well, at least now you can photon overcharge the pylon for an extra second. It's still going to go down. Army comes back, some probes gonna go down too. Nope, he's gonna pick up and leave instead, realizing that the cannon was gonna, I guess, that? stop his retreat path if he didn't leave right then, right there. Right that now. pylon depowering the forge, though, I actually didn't realize that would be depowered from it, so the plus two weapons was really stalled out by this attack. Not that this was a race, because uh... he's thermal not on his way to his own plus two, but it's still kinda nice to get. The attack does pick off the oracle, but the attack is cleaned up ultimately by the ground forces at the end. Yeah. Uh, I do believe there's. Another Medivax? No, this didn't really end up doing a bunch. There we go. I was going to say, usually Euthermal's doing two things at once, of course. It's pretty good Terran and whatnot, but... Um, these drops have not added too much on. Still 17 workers to 17 workers killed. And Harsum, with the bigger army and better upgrades, is looking for an attack. This uh, Wood of Mine drop could get a couple of probes. It, probably, it should get a couple of probes, but can he hold on? Liberator Siege up. Wood of Mines cover the Liberators as well. I think he's good. Uh, defensively, this is a perfect setup, I believe. Mm. For the time being. I, so, questions being asked, by the way, too, about, like, why didn't you throw him over wall off his natural? And it's still not walled off. And I, I mean, earlier on, it made a lot of sense because he was so desperate for money, he couldn't even really afford that depot. But here, this late, I'm kind of like, these adepts should not be shading into the base like this. Get that extra depot down. Yeah, this one of mine dropped did a surprising amount of damage. But once again, evening each other up. Like, <laughs> those adepts did the same damage to the SCV line. Um, in fact, more going into the natural, or the third base, rather. As Harsum maybe looks towards the natural, but I really think Ethermal is not going to be broken. He's actually ahead in army supply now, but chooses a very dangerous thing to do. Picks up in three medevacs to go to that third again. Yeah, Euthermal's actually playing really well. Harsim's just playing a lot better in a lot of these cases, but what I find quite interesting, like, let's hypothesize for a moment that Euthermal loses the game. I think we'll see a, a very different looking TVP if he goes to fight against Sake, for example, in the loser's match afterwards. But uh, right now, he really does have to pull out all the stops. Being down a game like this, he can't really let Harsim get away with anything. He's up in a little bit of army supply right now, so I like that he's actually taking Whoa. him fully. It's not a manor mule, I don't think. Yeah, it seems like it was an Oz mistake because he scanned. I, I thought he was actually going to repair the medevacs. He was about to talk about how I really liked it. No, there's no way. There's not enough time when you do a drop like this to repair. Well, it just made me think of the, uh, the R2-D2 SCV we've seen more recently. <laughs> yeah, but even those, I think, are at this point, like, no. still not quite on purpose. Just Shout out to you, Thermal, by the way, for not wanting to make it look like he was BM. But oops, sorry, might not seem like a lot, guys. But Kim was just yeah. stop microing to type it. Yeah, right? Uh, SCVs are going to go down. The thing that's weird about that, though, is that I think manor muling actually when you're winning is not that bad of a BM. Sometimes it sets some people on tilt, but it's more like he realizes he's not about to win the game. Like It's more like, no, I don't think I'm that far ahead. Like, I'm not dumb. Don't don't misconstrue this as me being dumb. Uh, but so many SCVs just went down, and that's, you know, I think that Euthermal has actually been in the... Um, Worst position over the last like 10 minutes, basically of the entire game. It's just that he had a one moment, one shining moment when he had a better army supply. In fact, he still has better army supply, but he just can't use it super well. The drop didn't really work out as well as he wanted to. Uh, it's really a lot in defenses that have to be moved and positioned absolutely correctly. And Harsum is eventually going to get to even better units. He's got 2 2 now. Uh, which is pretty damn good. He's on his way to 3 3. I guess I didn't realize he didn't have blinks. That's a big reason as to why he could never push in, but. Oh, God. Yeah, if that's going to be plus three armor versus plus two weapons, that's going to hurt. Now, Harsum, you throw them both Dutch, by the way, so I don't have any idea what they're saying, but just kind of a small kind of cool factor because we don't get a lot of players from the same region playing against each other. Yeah, they actually, just to be clear, they 
Euthermal understands what Harsim saying. <laughs> Which we don't know. Could have been rude. Could have been very rude. <laughs> Not rude is what he said to a meal before the game started. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, this is a, as I said, like a lot of Liberators, there's actually a scary looking army. No medevacs though means that every sim hurts the bio and the Liberators have to be in a perfect position uh, to actually be effective here. The yeah, amount of stalkers think... quite tear them down. Well, actually, I like the cannon here quite a bit because I would stop the Liberators from getting in for freezies, but of course, uh, oh, that disruptor's is going to kill three wood mines. That sucks. There's no medevacs at all. No healing going down on top of this bio. In fact, some of these units won't even be able to stim. Yeah, this is a big problem. One that Euthermal, I'm, I'm guessing, recognizes, but is just choosing not to oh, solve. Gosh. Uh, he never got to a second starport, so his starport's time is very valuable, and for him right now, I guess it seems tempting to go for this mass liberator, instead of adding on a couple medevacs. It seems so odd to see adepts shading into what is nothing, by the way. <laughs> they didn't even shit over to the army. <laughs> but there goes the liberator army. Euthermal still has one back at home, and he does have at least a couple medevacs this time. He, he traded it okay-ish, but the problem is, again, like, I know the clip doesn't exist anymore. I really wish it did. But every time I see this with upgrades, I always think back to that Roddy incident in Hots where he just like was three three zealots versus one one bio on some random ladder match. And he A moves with the zealots and tabs out to go just literally do anything else. Tabs into him having won the game. Like upgrades are such a big deal in this matchup. And you've got Hearthstone who's not AFK with the zealots, but instead microing adepts and force fields and guardian shields and disruptors and just everything's going better for him. These upgrades make it all the more reason why. Oh, this is making some great shots. We'll get decent I, ones. I don't know, man. Even with the wood mines getting shots. Oh, no. I think Euthermal is absolutely dead. He's only had... There's been key moments where he's had better armor supply, but he's really not been able to do anything with it. So his mother back's oh! about to go down. Oh, oh that one Marauder God. saved it. Good job, buddy. But what is it going to do? It's, uh, it's going to get to the main base and kill, I guess, a couple of probes. See that even... Because the reliance on Liberators, I think, was what kept him in this game for so long, considering how the pacing went was going very poorly for him. And yeah. then he saw the start, he's like, oh, I guess that's that's actually not going to work out for me. So, GG. Um, yeah. I don't know if they do winner's match or loser's match. We've been doing it our way for so long, I don't remember what the normal format is. <laughs> yeah, winners or losers. First, I believe so. it'll probably be winners, if I had to guess. Yeah, that's usually the way that the people do it. Um... That will be 2-0 for Arsene, though, of course, and we'll go on to the winners. Euthermal goes to loses face sake. I want to address something in chat really quick before we go to a break, which is that guy that started this whole chat conversation, I suppose, about, like, banned or not banned and, and shit like that. Misconstrued two comments that were at different times as being together when I talked about chatters who would watch if I had a low-cut shirt that wouldn't be very useful because they would never contribute positively to the chat, and him being some guy that we don't know making a stupid comment. Those are two different discussions. My point was that you seem to be getting all up in a of a tizzy for is that Rifkin can make some of these jokes because we know him and we know he's not a little shitter, right? No, we you why it's our fucking channel. There you go. End of discussion. <laughs> no, but I don't want to end it at that because that's that's the whole complaint. There is consistency. My point is not that a sub could say something or a donator could say something. It would be like, well, I guess he donated, so we're going to like, you know, be totally fine with him. We've actually been very clear about that, that if you're a jackass and you donate, we don't, we're not going to unban you because you donated. People have used that against us when asking for unbans and shit like that. It's that if we know you and you make like a joke or something, we're a lot more likely to be like, oh, like, okay, you're a good person, though, overall. So, sorry, but that's why that happened. And uh, you just proved yourself to be a little shitter about how you reacted to it, so... Yeah, don't be surprised if you do get banned. Okay, now we're gonna go to a break. Bye.